Hi, this is Adela Knox, Head of Content at Finnovate. Welcome everyone to Finnovate Live. Over the course of this week, we'll be bringing you a range of webinars, thought leadership articles, exclusive interviews with FinTech pioneers, as well as our first e-magazine of 2019. Remember to visit the Finnovate blog for all Digital Week content. We will be live tweeting this webinar, so you can join in the conversation using the hashtag Finnovate Live. While our webinars this week have been pre-recorded, you can still submit questions during the presentation. Send them to us using the Ask a Question module on your screen or by tweeting us. We'll be passing this on to the presenters and coming back with a unique article featuring the answers. You will also notice we have compiled a resource list for all our webinars. Feel free to download and click through the information we've curated for you. Today, we welcome Clara Durodier, Executive Chair at Cognitive Finance Group, to explore a practical approach to designing an AI strategy and how you can ensure you keep your board executives involved. Thanks, Adela. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's webinar. Thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Clara Durodier, and I am the uh, Chair and Founder of Cognitive Finance Group. I'm based out of London and work with clients across Asia, Europe, and North America. Our clients need us typically for four reasons. One, board training for AI awareness. Um, the second reason is design, helping them design their AI strategy. The third point is select AI tools tailored to their needs. And the fourth reason they reach to us is to help them with data science work and advice especially for deep learning and reinforcement learning tools. So in today's webinar, I'll walk you through some of our findings on the topic of AI adoption and understanding AI at the board level. Before we move ahead, I'd just like to very quickly take you through a copyright disclaimer that no part of this presentation may be reproduced without my prior permission. Please do reach out to the address, email address on the slide and we will be delighted to to give permission to use our work. So today, I'll talk about three main points. Um, one is why adopt AI to start with. We need to understand why we need to do that. And the second point, main point is barriers to correct AI adoption. So my background, as you can see, is um, financial services. I used to work in asset and wealth management. Um, prior to um, establishing Cognitive Finance Group. I'm interested in re academic research, which sits at the intersection of neuroscience, AI, and wealth management. Um, I'm an author of an upcoming book on AI, and I speak at various leading conferences. And my work is primarily with boards of directors on business strategy formulation. I also work with investment committees in private equity and VCs, um, people who want to invest in AI. Um, I also work with executive teams on the selection and adoption of AI and advise government financial authorities like central banks and regulators on correct AI adoption. And finally, I work with um, AI startups. That's where a lot of interesting things are happening. And I'm invited as a guest lecturer at different leading academic institutions to talk about AI in business. So, my work and the findings you'll, you'll see today in my presentation will hinge on four main points. How to learn what we need to learn about AI, what do we need to know to in order to strategize AI for business, how do we implement AI, and finally, if I have time, I'll cover how do we invest in AI. So we started to, um, to our journey today with the first point, why adopt AI? We needed to adopt AI at a point when the majority of our customers have started being like this. Um, primarily 2007, when the iPhone was invented, the smartphone was invented, that actually quite slowly, until it wasn't that slow, it changed the way we do business in financial services. So all this engagement clients have with their um, uh, smartphones that creates a huge footprint of data, which is relevant to the work we do in financial services and how we deliver our, our services. 
in addition to this volume of data, what is really important is that the quality and the development of AI technologies actually have permitted a breakthrough which we've never seen before. And the revolution in deep learning, which is the reason for which we've been talking about AI for the, so much for the past few years, so the revolution in deep learning has been very profound and it definitely surprised people in like like the co-founder of Google. So you can imagine that if the co-founder of Google is was taken by surprise by how quickly this technology has developed, you can imagine how it, board executives in financial services might feel. So all this development in, in deep learning, let's just call them AI technologies, actually have been quite fundamental in the past two years. So I'm here, I've got here for you um, a few uh, developments which have reached human parity, which means these tools actually deliver a level of competence, which is um, uh, quite significant for us as an industry to understand. So 2016, object recognition at human parity. 2017, speech recognition at human parity. And in 2018, the breakthrough was phenomenal in reading comprehension, machine translation, and speech processing. So let's try to imagine how these tools, because this, this is pure technology, how these tools actually are able to transform everything we do, the work we do every day in financial services. But we keep talking about AI solutions um, and what AI can do or cannot do for our industry. And there's a lot of, I feel, a lot of confusion as to what's all about, what it actually can do for us. People talk about use cases to, to the level of exhaustion and confusion, I would add. But here for you today, I brought um, a different classification of what solutions, AI solutions are or can do. In, in our industry. These are two main categories. One is scaling for business growth. And the second one is efficiency, primarily in internal processes optimization. So when we talk about scaling with AI, we have uh, the ability to reach a very large number of clients. And ultimate, ultimately that translates in, in, a, in a business growth opportunity. So, I brought here for you the case of M Financial. I'm sure everybody has heard of them. But what I'm sure that none of you uh, may have noticed, this one, one line which they had in one of their presentations in June 2017 at Money 2020 conference. So what they said in their presentation was that our growth is all about deep user understanding, not cross-selling. So what they're actually saying here is that they've managed, they being a 10-year-old company, AI company, their growth has been just about understanding and correctly predicting their users' needs, not cross-selling services. What I mean by that, what they mean by that is if someone, if Joe Blog gets a mortgage, it means that we as a bank can sell them uh, house insurance. So that's not the cross-selling, which is the key to their growth. In 2018, and Financial identified um, and made public um, that they have 850 million active users and more than 50 million businesses in China. So what does 850 million active users across all different categories, as you can see on the slides, payments, insurance, wealth management, credit scoring. So what does 800 million active users mean in, say, uh, US, the US, United States population? That is 2.5 times the population of um, the United States, or 34 times the population of Australia. These are some staggering numbers. And when you look at what they can do, they can reach with the use of, of, of this technology is pretty phenomenal. So the second way to scale with AI is um, the speed of reaching out to, to clients. So another example I brought for you today is um, how this all the five businesses 
have reached how many months, how long did it take them to reach $1 billion in personal loans issued? So to the rights, we have Prosper, I'm sure everybody's heard of them. It took them eight years, 98 months, to reach $1 billion in total personal loans issued. Whereas Marcus, in the same type of business, but running everything autonomously, they've reached the same uh, threshold as um, only 12 in only 12 uh, sorry only eight months which is 12 times faster with ai this is what i'd like you to to truly see what the true power of this technology is so it's scaling business growth at a speed and at a reach which we've never been able to achieve before this is a fantastic business opportunity so now we move <clears throat> now we we um, we move into um, the second chapter of our presentation to discuss barriers to correct AI adoption. So this is this is uh, research and these are findings uh, firsthand and through the lenses of a former practitioner and someone who actually worked in in trying to grow businesses in financial services. Um, so it's my first hand experience is also. Um, working uh, directly with clients in this space, trying to reinvent um, their business models with AI, and we are helping them with that. So I brought for you today um, five main themes which I have identified in my work, um, which keep board directors, executives, not necessarily awake at night, but these are five main uh, themes which seem to preoccupy them quite significantly. So I thought it would be useful for you to understand when you think of designing your own AI strategy to see what, every, what other people are thinking about. So that helps you recalibrate your thinking or perhaps refine your thinking. So the first theme is reimagine business models in a data-driven marketplace. So what does that, that means <clears throat> that executives are interested in reimagining is not slapping a layer of AI on what they've got. No, it's truly reimagining their business models when they have so much data in their hands and the tools AI provides them with. The second point board directors think about is how can they redefine trust? with AI. This is one of the core deliveries of my work and I fundamentally believe that as an industry we have a unique opportunity to redefine trust, to reconnect with our consumers, with our uh, clients on the foundation of trust, not on any other foundations which can be easily shaken as we've seen over the years but on the foundation of trust. But to do that, we need to redefine it. People do talk about trust as the core principle of our industry and how important that is, but it's very difficult to truly put the finger on it and say, this is what we need to do in order to redefine it. Yes, we need it, but how do we, get about it? How do we go about it? The third theme which preoccupies board level executives is AI ethics and responsible design. Any smart board level executive would ask hard questions about how the tools they deploy are ethically and responsibly designed. I mean, AI tools. The fourth theme is new thinking frameworks. It, in other words, it is what we need to change in our thinking. How do we need to reboot? our thinking, to calibrate our thinking to what this new world actually can deliver um, and the opportunities we have as a business. And the fifth point is, what is our role as, as entities in financial services? And as banks and digital identity, does that mean new revenue streams for us? How is the operating model changing? How is the revenue model changing for us? And the five drivers for all of these five things are customers, trust, 
the need for personalization, data economy, and the fifth one is volume and velocity of data. So AI solutions, once deployed, they change business models, operating models, revenue models, and very importantly, they change the networks within the enterprise, within the industry, and I would argue within global um, reach of, of how financial services operate. But that's a topic for some other time. Um, the barriers to AI, correct AI adoptions are five. And they're primarily at the executive at the top level. <clears throat> the first one is lack of education and understanding what this technology means. So training boards of directors and C-level executives, all of them, in what this technology can deliver for their business model is absolutely essential. The second barrier is qualified and independent AI advice um, or advisors. Um, I find that a lot of uh, advisors just pile up um, to give AI advice just because um, they, um, they used to do digital transformation. All of a sudden now they change their business cards and they've become AI specialist, that doesn't work that way. And I have a, a host of reasons to explain why that's not the case. So one barrier, the second barrier to correct AI adoption is that is the lack of correct, of choosing the right AI advisor. The third point is trusting this technology. Um, you cannot trust something which you don't understand. So there is no trust almost from the get-go in how this technology actually is going to work. The fourth um, barrier is lack of AI strategy. And I'm going to reach on this in the next few slides, but um, yes, there is no overall long-term AI strategy. It's a piecemeal work which has been done for the past three or four years. I've seen in many institutions, it's a piecemeal work which blindsides people and which actually stops people from unlocking the value of this technology long term. And finally, <clears throat> I find that there is a lack of courage in the leadership to actually dive into this technology. And there's also a level of hum lack of humility in saying at the executive level and the C-suite and board level, I don't know what this technology is and I'm ready to learn. So that level of humility, we need to learn it at the executive level. No one knows, I mean, you can't be expected to know what AI is, but everybody expects you to learn what AI is. So <clears throat> the first arrow in adopting this technology correctly is to, it's the failing to, it's failure to understand that AI strategy is like a puzzle. Ultimately, it is all about the bigger picture. Yes, indeed, you have to take piece by piece and change individually different processes and you have to deploy technology uh, in, a, in an individual case by case basis. But you do that knowing what the bigger picture is. And again, I come back to the discussion uh, from the previous slide. There is no bigger vision. There is a piecemeal vision of adoption of AI and that's where businesses will fail. And they will scale because they will have wasted a lot of money investing in the wrong things. The second error I have identified is that once they assume that there is a bigger picture, understanding people know what they're going, people know that they need to start with a piecemeal adoption on process by process basis adoption. But what they, some of them they don't understand is that automating individual business processes without examining how that process actually is designed and how what it needs to be changed in order to enable, correct, and unlock the value of, of automation, then um, and how that process impacts at the enterprise-wide um, um, uh, reach. So failure to truly understand how each tool or how each piece, say, looking at this picture, how what does it mean if we were to change just one wheel and leave the other three um, as they are? What does that mean? Is that a, a, what is the impact on the safety of the vehicle overall? So in the same way, we need to think 
when we deploy this technology and try to change business processes, we need to think of one, what is the impact on what is the design of that unique business process, and two, how that automation actually will impact across the entire business model. So on this slide, actually, I brought uh, for you um, another way to look at the need to learn and the need to educate um, uh, the executive teams on what AI is and what it can do for the business. Um, according to the end of 2017 annual reports of uh, London Stock Exchange listed companies uh, um, acting in financial services, 94% of banks' leadership that never had any professional experience which relates to technology. 94% the, of, of the leadership of this financial institution, they don't know what they actually, what it means to, to work with technology. The second number I brought for you is 93. 93% of the CEOs interviewed across different, a very wide range of sectors feel disappointed in the tech project outcomes. This is according to the IBC survey in 2017. So what I would what I would say actually is just looking at those numbers, it, it, it tells you, a, it depicts a bigger picture which says if the executives, if the top of a business doesn't understand what they need to do with this technology, or what they can do with this technology to benefit their business models, then it's time to take them to the ABC, to the basic of what this technology is and get them to learn the basics before they understand how they can, how they can um, build a business which is sustainable. And a lot of people have said to me, look, um, why, why rock the, the boats now? I've got one year left on this board and I'm done. I'm, I'm going to retire anyway, so what's the point in learning anything? Well, the point is very, very big and it's very important. Anyone in an executive role, be it at the board level or C-suite level, they have a duty of care and they have um, the responsibility of running their businesses in a sustainable way for the generations to come. So not learning about this technology, about what AI can do for businesses, not understanding the thinking behind or the new framework of thinking of running their businesses in a data-driven economy, it's basically undermining business businesses' viabilities um, for generations to come. So I would say that this is, um, this is quite fundamental and it's um, deeply important for boards to understand. Another barrier to um, correct adoption of AI I mentioned in my previous slides was trust with AI. And this is quite fundamental is because um, not only because I believe that we have the opportunity to redefine trust in our industry, and how to do that is a subject perhaps for, for another, another opportunity, another webinar, but I'm committed to say that trust with AI in our industry is a happy marriage between governance and ethics. And what I mean governance is not only corporate governance, which we all know, and we all know that we need to, to be um, very mindful of this when we run these businesses, but also AI governance. So the ethics element of this marriage is not just ethics of AI, but is also privacy ethics, is data ethics. And ultimately, and not finally, it's ethics towards our customers to truly, truly understand that we need to put our customers' interests at the core of everything we do. So that's how we trust, that's how we can redefine trust uh, with AI. We have the tools, the technology, the technology helps us to do that. But please bear in mind, trust is a marriage between governance and ethics in, in business. 
a lot of people have said to me that um, we are very keen to deploy to do something about AI, whatever that do something about AI means. But a lot of people have said to me, Carl, we don't trust this technology because we don't know who ultimately is responsible for it. I think that is a very valid point. Um, and I answered this back in 2017 when I was on a panel at a leading conference in, in Europe, FinTech conference, when the same question was posed. And my uh, answer to that was simply to say that algorithms have parents. And a host of, of academic research since then has shown that indeed um, the final responsibility of this tool stays with the humans behind it, behind them. So algorithms have parents, and we, when we build these tools, are the parents of these tools, or when we adopt these tools in the enterprise, we become the parents of these tools. So when we, when we look after, when we deploy this technology, we need to understand that there are three main um, values which we need to ensure that all of the tools which we adopt will have, that this technology is human-centered, that it has positive values, and that more, most important, very importantly, has a switch-off button. In other words, there's a human in the loop, so we will always retain control. Um, the, the topic around responsibility and rights for this type of tools, it's again a topic for, for another time to discuss, but it's a very important topic to understand at the board level. So one final thought before, before I wrap up my presentation. Um, um, I've had many discussions with uh, senior executives in financial services and it's always been the whole conversation. It's all of these technological changes are, are so overwhelming and just feels so impossible. It's like a task difficult to overcome. But again, um, I think it's just one step at a time. Um, a lot of people have asked us, where do we need to start with AI? Well, you just need to make the first step. And the first step is identifying uh, an independent AI advisor, which is, doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, one of the big names, consultants, but it's a specialist, um, uh, the, the specialist advisor who understands your challenges specific to your particular business model, not in general, but specific to your particular business model in financial services, and then helps you um, without having any vested interest to adopt the right tools. But what do boards need in order to progress with, with this technology? Well, they need new thinking frameworks to lead technology companies. So that is possibly one of the most fundamental shifts in thinking. Bankers are no longer leading banks. Bankers are leading technology companies which happen to operate in financial services. And final question, which I frequently um, am asked, what do boards need? Or what do they lack, rather? They lack the time to think strategically. And someone very wisely said, um, if you don't allow 30 minutes a day to just stare out of your window and think, then you're not doing your job right. So uh, time to think. So the final um, point of my presentation today will we'll talk a little bit about uh, some resources which I recommend. And um, obviously, I would like to introduce my upcoming book, which is called Edge of Progress. And it's a, a book I specifically written for uh, C-level executives, for board level uh, directors. Um, and um, financial service professionals, all of them, all of practitioners in our industry can learn something from this. Um, it's also written for AI startups, uh, founders and investors. Um, and it's also written for lawyers advising financial services or specializing in fintech or financial services. And um, 
um, with us in mind um, on, on uh, in the next slide I'll, I'll show you um, a link to one of uh, our regular um, AI capsules as we call that's where we've put a lot of uh, information relevance curated for financial services sector so uh, this is my last slide I'd like to thank you for uh, staying with me until the end of this webinar. I hope you found it of interest. Um, I welcome, uh, sincerely welcome to stay in contact with you. You have my details here, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and also uh, there is a link here where you can uh, subscribe to our um, AI capsule, as we call it, material uh, curated for financial services uh, practitioners. So thank you very much for your time again, and I very much look forward to meeting um, most of you, if not all of you, sometimes, hopefully, in person around the globe um, or at a different conferences. Um, I wish you all the best, and thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.